Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. And today I'm very excited because we are going to be talking about tofu. I'm pretty sure that most of us know what tofu is, but just in case you don't, tofu is a plant-based protein that is made from soybeans, which are turned into soy milk, which is then coagulated slash compressed to form blocks of tofu of various densities. So in this video, I'm going to be describing the different types of tofu, the best ways to use them, and some fun little tips and tricks that I have and use that you can use to make your next tofu experience slash recipe your best one yet. And before we get started, I do want to quickly say that this video is proudly sponsored by Nasoya Tofu. They are my all time favorite tofu brand. I love that their tofu is certified organic and it holds up really well in recipes and has just a subtle, uh, consistent flavor to it that makes it really versatile as well. Packaging is fun and also based on the type of tofu you get, it comes in different colors like these. So if you want to check out Nasoya, I will link their store locator in the description of this video so you can find the store closest to you that carries it. So there are four main types of tofu that you will see in stores. Silken tofu, firm or medium firm tofu, extra firm, and super firm. The only real difference between these types of tofu is their moisture content. Like I said earlier, tofu is made from soy milk that has been pressed to form these blocks. So silken tofu has been pressed the least while super firm tofu has been pressed the most. Another way to confirm this is by checking the protein content on each block of tofu. As you can see, the silken tofu has way less tofu than the firm, which has less than the extra firm, which has less than the super firm. So first up, I'm going to talk to you about silken tofu. Silken tofu is the least firm variety of tofu and has a very creamy texture to it. It's actually so soft that you can literally scoop it with a spoon, but you can, however, if you'd like to cut it into form cubes, I would just suggest cutting it inside of the packaging. Otherwise it may fall apart just a little bit. The most traditional way to use silken tofu is to serve it in a broth based dish like this vegan miso soup that I showed you how to make with my friend Remy a few months ago. However, silken tofu can also be blended in both sweet and savory applications to give more volume, protein, and fluffiness to a dish. I like to blend it with chocolate in particular to make my creamy, dreamy, no bake chocolate raspberry tart. But you can also use it in savory applications like in my easy vegan mayo recipe and my vegan French onion dip. Basically, you want to use silken tofu when you're looking for a tofu with a more melt in your mouth texture that goes really well with soups and stews, or you can use it blended in sweet or savory applications to give more volume or fluffiness to a dish. Next up, we're going to be talking about firm tofu. Firm tofu is the softest of the firmer tofus, and as you can see, it still has a little give when you poke it. It's a lot easier to slice though and can hold up well when tossed in a marinade. I personally like to use firm tofu in my vegan egg salad recipe because it has the creamy texture of silken tofu but doesn't completely dissolve when you crumble it. When you bake firm tofu, it gets a nice and crispy outside but still has a soft and fluffy inside as you can see here in this baked rosemary garlic tofu that's on the Nasoya website. And as always, all these recipes are linked in the description below so be sure to check them out. But now moving on, we're going to be talking about extra firm tofu. Extra firm tofu is, well, extra firm. This tofu has a heartier bite and higher protein content per serving, but still has a little give when you squeeze it. I would say it's the most commonly used form of tofu in our society and can be used in a wide variety of recipes. My favorite way to use extra firm tofu is my three ingredient crispy tofu recipe. It's seriously a staple in my diet, I have it at least once a week, and I use it all the time for meal prep, and you can also coat in extra seasonings or sauces for more variety or to switch things up. You can also crumble extra firm tofu and use it in a pretty realistic tofu scramble or to saute with other seasonings for a ground meat substitute. And finally, you can actually blend extra firm tofu and it gives a great consistency to vegan cheese spreads. The tofu's density still helps it to keep a light and fluffy texture, which in my opinion makes my easy vegan ricotta recipe that much more realistic. And last but certainly not least, we have my pal here, super firm tofu. This is tofu that has really been pressed. You'll notice that other tofu comes stored in water inside of a larger plastic box, but this tofu is simply wrapped in plastic. You can use super firm tofu in any recipe where you would use extra firm tofu. The main difference is that it will hold up better if you are simmering it and be even crispier when you bake it because it already has a lower moisture content. I like to use super firm tofu in my braised tofu recipe because it absorbs the marinade well and doesn't fall apart as much when you cook it in the pan for an extended period of time. 
But that being said, you can literally use the super firm tofu and any of the recipes that I just mentioned with the firm or extra firm tofu. And the benefit of this is that it is pre-pressed, which leads me into our tofu hacks. So there are two main hacks that I use when I cook with tofu to help make it a little bit crispier and to help absorb the marinade well, or to just overall get a better texture. The first is this little guy over here, my tofu press. I filmed the video, but just to show you another angle, it opens up like this, have a little grate, water gets caught down here. Now we'll go to the clip. So people use a tofu press to get out extra moisture before baking and marinating. And by taking out some of the water, the tofu comes in and allows us to refill that space with spice infused sauces. This, however, doesn't necessarily change the final texture of the tofu. If you press firm tofu, it's still going to be crispy on the outside and softer on the inside than if you pressed and baked extra firm tofu or super firm tofu. You don't have to press super firm tofu, but it is still always going to be the crispiest and the most dense in the center because we're not pressing it as much as people who are actually creating the tofu to begin with. However, I would still always recommend pressing your firm and extra firm tofu because it does make it that much crispier and infuse that much more flavor into it. You do notice a difference. Also, if you don't have a tofu press, you can still press your tofu. There are a lot of hacks online. Uh, one of them is wrapping it in towels and then stacking books or heavy objects on it you can do that if you don't have a tofu press but honestly if you eat a lot of tofu how many times can I say tofu in this video I would recommend investing in one just because when I press tofu without a press I find that it doesn't press as evenly it often gets a little lopsided or the books that I put on top sometimes fall off too which is just a not fun experience and my final hack that you can do is to freeze your tofu you can do this with firm extra firm or super firm tofu and this changes the texture of the tofu and gives it a heartier almost spongier bite to it but in a good way all you need to do is drain your tofu from the package pat off any extra liquid with a towel and then place it in a freezer safe bag or tupperware container and freeze it overnight or for at least six hours you want it to be completely frozen all the way through then just thaw your tofu completely, cut it, and use it as directed in any recipe that requires baking it in cubes. So this hack does require some advanced prep work because you have to freeze and then thaw the tofu. But honestly, whenever I have a block of tofu that may be going bad before I'm going to use it, that's when I just cut it and put it in my freezer and then save it for a later date. You can just put it in the freezer and it will stay good in there without getting any freezer burn or anything for up to two months. And that pretty much sums up this Tofu 101 course. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below uh, letting me know if you'd like more instructional videos like this. I had a lot of fun filming it and I think this is a topic that I get a lot of questions about, so I'm happy to provide it. And now I can just link you guys to this video the next time someone asks me. Also, thanks again to Nasoya for sponsoring this video and for making yummy tofu. If you guys wanna check out their store locator, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, it will be linked in the description below. And if you made it this far into the video, leave a comment and tell me your favorite type of tofu or your favorite tofu recipe that you have been loving recently. I think that is it though. So I guess I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you have an awesome day and continue to have one. Bye.